So in question 13, you're given a rectangle A, B, D, B, and a semicircle B, D, C. And in part A, we want to show that the perimeter of this is 2x plus 250 over x plus pi x over 2. Now, we're given a couple of dimensions. We're given the length AE is 2x, and we're given the length ED is y. We're also told the total area is equal to 250 metres squared. So we have enough parts to be able to deal with this. Now, if we look at the area, we can say that for the area, we can take our area of our rectangle, which would just be simply 2x times y, and we can add on the area of this semicircle. Now, a circle, an area of a circle is pi r squared, so a semicircle, half a circle is a half pi r squared. So we have a half times pi times, now, what our radius is, well, this length BD must be the diameter, and it's the same as A, which is 2x, so our radius must just be x. So we can add that to our diagram, our radius there is equal to x, so if we put that in, and we know that that is equal to 250. Now, if we look at our perimeter formula, we can see here that we've got no y. So actually, we want to rearrange this to make y the subject so we can get rid of it a little later. So I can say that 2xy is equal to 250 minus pi x squared over 2. So y is going to be 250 over 2x minus pi x over 4 or 125 over x minus pi x over 4. So that's going to be my expression for y. We're going to use that shortly. So let's look at what we would normally class the perimeter as. So our perimeter normally, we would have 2x plus this y and this y. So 2y plus this length b, c, d here, which again is a semicircle. Now, normally, if we're looking at the length on the outside, you're looking at the circumference of the circle, which is uh, pi d, pi times the diameter, and it's half of that, so we've got a half pi, and our diameter is the 2x there. So let's just tie that up a little bit. We've got 2x plus 2y plus uh, pi x there. So let's call that 1. Let's call that 2. And if we say we're going to sub 1 into 2, so we can look at our perimeter and say that, that is equal to 2x plus 2 times 125 over x minus pi x over 4 plus pi x. So that is equal to 2x plus 250 over x minus pi x over 2 plus pi x, and finally that is equal to 2x plus 250 over x minus pi over 2 plus pi, minus pi over 2x plus pi x is plus pi x over 2. So let's just write that to clarify that p is equal to 2x plus 250 over x plus pi x over 2, and that's what they're asking you to show. So, it's reliant on a bit of prior knowledge and being able to piece quite a bit of algebra together. But remember, even if you don't get this, you can still work on some of the later parts, or at least partially on some of the later parts. So, 
because they're actually giving you what the formula is. So you can still get some of the later marks even if you're not too sure how to generate this. So part B can be quite difficult. Part B says to explain why x is greater than 0 but x is less than the square root of 500 over pi. So it's placing a limit on what our x values can be. Now to do this we need to look back at what the diagram says and to start with we need to think the x and y what do they represent? Well they represent lengths and if they represent lengths they must be positive. So to start with uh, all lengths must be positive so therefore x must be greater than 0 as x is our radius and y must also be greater than 0. Why is this length here? Otherwise it doesn't exist. Now this x is greater than 0 actually gives us one of our two limits but what about this other side? Well if we use y is greater than 0 and we go back to something we found in the first part, part A, well we have an expression for y so actually we can use this and say well if y is greater than 0 that implies 125 over x minus pi x over 4 must be greater than 0 and we can rearrange this so 125 over x must be greater than pi x over 4 so therefore 4 times 125 500 over the pi must be greater than x squared so therefore x must be less than the square root of 500 over pi so if I call that 1, I call that 2, combining 1 and 2, therefore x is greater than 0 and less than the square root of 500 over pi. So you can get one of the marks in relation to recognising that the lengths must be positive and stating that therefore x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0. But to get the second mark, you are reliant on understanding where this relationship for the area came for in the first part. Part C, however, is reliant on the actual formula that they give you in case you don't get it. So you can get all the marks for C even if you've messed up in parts A and B. Because part C asks you to find the minimum perimeter of the pool to three significant figures. Well, if we want a minimum, and we're looking at the perimeter, it must be the perimeter formula. And let's rewrite this because we don't really like it in this form. So P is equal to. Now, I can write it a few different ways. But there is a common factor of x in two of the terms, so I can write 2 plus pi over 2 times x, taking these two terms, plus 250x to the minus 1, rewriting this as a power, because the minimum is telling me I need to differentiate. So I'm going to differentiate that function with respect to the variable x, because it's in terms of x. Well, if I differentiate the first term, the x just disappears, so we get 2 plus pi over 2. If I differentiate the second term, power to the front, so minus 250, x to the minus 2, so I can rewrite that as over x squared. <coughs> now, because it's a minimum, it's a turning point, a turning value, I can say that that is equal to 0. Rearranging that then, we've got 250 over x squared is equal to, well, I can combine these into one fraction, so 4 plus pi over 2, like that. Rearrange again, 
I can state therefore 500 over 4 plus pi is equal to x squared and therefore x must be equal to the square root of 500 over 4 plus pi. So that's my x value. This is the x value for the minimum perimeter. But that doesn't actually get us a value for the minimum perimeter. Now we know our x value, all we have to do is substitute it back in to the original formula. So we take our p and we have 2 times square root of 500 over 4 plus pi plus 250 over the square root of 500 over 4 plus pi plus pi times the square root of 500 over 4 plus pi all over 2. And if you put this into your calculator, you end up with approximately 59.756614. But the question tells you it wants it to three significant figures, so that's 59.8 meters. Don't forget the unit to three significant figures is meters because it's the perimeter and a perimeter is a length. But that's how you solve this problem.